you know, I'll just make a brief statement and then open it up to questions. So you all saw the statement that I made on the floor. Really right now, I just want to talk about process. You're familiar with the background. Um, in mid-November, around November 11th, um, allegations made by one of our members against Representative Lubsock uh, were in the press. Representative Lubsock responded. Um, another woman came forward. Um, uh, represent, at that time, Representative Lubsock asked uh, anyone to make a formal written complaint, and they did that. Um, the speaker um, consulted with our legal staff who said under the policy we could hire a third-party investigator. That was done. The speaker recused herself, and I took over the investigation around November 20th. Um, the investigation has been in the process um, throughout uh, uh, that time and um, the report was just finalized and um, after reviewing that report um, considering the seriousness of the allegations and um, considering some other um, actions that have been taken in the last three months uh, that fall outside the report but were things said in the press or things said to individual members um, Considering all of that, I made a recommendation and making a recommendation uh, to have Representative uh, Lebsock expelled. In order to expel Representative Lebsock, we have to have a two-thirds vote of the chamber um, through a resolution. That resolution will be considered this Friday. A two-thirds vote is 44 out of 65 members to pass that resolution. The resolution will be introduced later today. Uh, the resolution is not very specific. It, it is drafted very broadly, but to give members the information they need to consider for that resolution, I'll be making a redacted copy of the report available to members. I will also be providing them and you a copy of a memo that includes some of my analysis. Um, and then there will be open caucuses that will take place on Thursday upon adjournment. We will have a single caucus process, um, meeting. Um, we're doing that because it's just easier um, for me where uh, members from both sides of the aisle might have questions. And then each uh, caucus can go to separate rooms to deliberate. And then the resolution itself, which will be considered Friday morning on the floor, um, will of course have open and ample debate and I, um, as you heard me say on the floor today, Representative Lebsock will have ample opportunity at that time to address um, anything that he wants to about the report or the process or my recommendation. Representative, um, we could post that. Post yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. Okay. Um, we are hearing from um, I've heard from at least one member of the House and just general conversation that this report should be made public um, and feel it's a gross violation if it is not. Would you, would you, how do you respond to those, those, those responses? The law and policy prohibit me from making it public. The, um, the uh, women involved in the complaint will uh, be given a redacted copy and so will Representative Lebsock. They can choose to make it public if they want. I cannot make it public. You don't feel like the public about. has a, a right to know about how their lawmakers are voting, what information they're using to vote on? So their votes will certainly be public. That's going to be a recorded vote. The information that um, is in the report uh, and any questions they have, um, they can, um, will be, given the opportunity to ask any questions about that in an open caucus. Again, I'm restricted by what the law and the policy limit me to. My own personal opinions might be different, but I am not given the authority to make it public under the law. But then the policy it does also doesn't make it clear that every member of the House gets to see these reports either. The policy talks about um, uh, decision makers on a need to know basis being shared information. In this situation, the decision makers are the body, and based on that need to know language in the policy, I am making the report available to them to review. You don't feel like the voters are decision makers in this case as well? I think the voters could also be decision makers in this case if they want Representative Lebsock to be uh, um, uh, 
recalled, uh, that is certainly their option, and this process doesn't limit that option. Um, but we, as a General Assembly, have the responsibility to police our own, to hold our own members to a high level of accountability, and that's what we're doing with this process. You know, we're talking about the whether... most serious thing that you can do, arguably, in this chamber, which is removing someone who's been duly elected by the constituents of their district. Do those constituents not have the right to know everything you know while you're deciding whether to remove someone they put in office? I think if members of the General Assembly feel that constituents should have a right to know in this situation, then we should change the law to make that the case. Do you, and what specific, uh, or can we get it from Dean if you don't know it off the top of your head, the site for that? Sure. Okay. Do you believe you have the votes to expel him? I have not undertaken a vote count. Um, I, you know, uh, I have been bound by confidentiality provisions, so ha I have not been discussing um, the, uh, you know, really where folks are um, in the process, in, in, in their consideration of any allegations. And I don't think folks have had the information available to them to make a decision. So I have not been trying to count votes. And, um, you know, in this situation, everyone has to vote their conscience. That's what I would expect members to do. I've made a recommendation, and it's really up to the body at this point to decide for themselves. What's your Representative, downside Lebsock, if it doesn't pass? Does Representative Lebsock has questioned the credibility of this report. Um, why do you feel this is the real deal? Why do you feel that there is strength to this and this should be believed? Sure. Uh, Representative Lipsock and I have met several times. He's sent me um, several emails. Um, I uh, met with him a couple times um, and asked him to put everything in writing regarding his concerns about the investigator. And I replied to those. Um, and the memo um, that I replied to him, that memo will be available to you all. Um, he says things like, the investigator looked at her phone while she was interviewing him. The investigator um, didn't type his answers word for word. Um, he also says she didn't interview witnesses that he provided. Uh, you know, he gave me the name of one witness that he said she didn't interview. And so I contacted her and said, can you please interview this person? And she did. If there are other witnesses, I just told Lepsock that Representative Lepsock this, um, you know, an hour ago, that um, if he thought there were additional witnesses to interview, he never replied, sent them to me. Um, and I'm certainly willing to um, consider anything that he wants. So the one name he gave me, I contacted the investigator about. She said that um, if he's re um, providing character witnesses, those aren't typically under the purview of the, her investigation. That's not what, it's not about who um, on either side is going to bring um, a, the, a number of, you know, how many character witnesses and what they say. It really was specific to the allegations. So she said, I'm going to, if you have a witness who has evidence or information about the specific allegations, that's who I'm gonna be interviewing. Um, if there was anyone else um, I told him to put in writing anything that he wanted me to follow up on. And the one person he asked, uh, he said, well, she's more than a character witness. Um, then she, that person was interviewed. Obviously, this is pretty unprecedented in your mind. What's the downside? You know, you're going through all this. What if it doesn't pass? Well, you know, we'll cross that bridge if and when we get there. I uh, felt... Once I learned more about the investigator's findings, that it's, they are very serious allegations and that we really have a responsibility to the body as a whole, to this institution, to the integrity of what we do here, to really hold ourselves to a higher standard. So that's my recommendation. I, no matter how the body votes, I stand by re my recommendation. So uh, President Grantham, just like President Grantham in the report against uh, Baumgartner, Lepsock doesn't believe the report. He says it's biased. You obviously believe the report. And Representative Lepsock has not seen the report yet. I told him as soon as it is redacted, he will get a copy. Um, he, uh, I, I think throughout the process, has been pretty combative and argumentative. Um, so 
throughout the process, you know, e even before he was ever investigated, um, w I'm sorry, before he was ever interviewed, he was attacking the investigator. So um, he was saying she hadn't reached out to him yet, she hadn't interviewed him yet. I got back to him at that point and said, you know, the investigator has a process that she uses where she interviews the complainants first and their witnesses and then gives him an opportunity to respond. Um, but he was not satisfied with that, so she did an earlier interview with him than she might have otherwise. But from before the time of the very first interview, he was saying, um, he was challenging the process. So he obviously will have an opportunity to get the full report. Um, it, it Again, names are redacted. He'll get the same copy that um, everyone else gets. Um, but it is not news to me that he's... Um, unsatisfied. I've, I've been meeting with him on several occasions. In each of those occasions, I told him to put his concerns in writing, and I've replied to him, uh, every concern of his, in writing back to him with, um, with my uh, responses. Is there one or two elements of this that, make, that helped you arrive at your determination, your, your recommendation, that you could share with some of the voters? Sure. What do you see in there that made you think, this is what we yeah, I think that his behavior demonstrated a pattern of behavior that not only violates the policy, but puts the integrity of this body um, at risk. And uh, it was the allegations brought up in the workplace harassment, uh, through the workplace harassment investigation, but also, um, in my mind, some of his actions outside of that. Um, more of that will be um, discussed in the memo that I hope to finalize shortly. Uh, but I think in the totality of the circumstances, with all those things considered, it is our responsibility to hold our members to um, higher ethical standards than what I think Representative Lebsack was demonstrating. I want to make sure I understand this. So Representative Lebsack has not seen the final report, and in less than 70 hours there's going to be a vote to expel him. Do you feel like that timeline's too rushed? Representative Lebsack, through the interview investigation process, has had a chance, multiple chances, to respond to every allegation. So he was notified of every allegation. He was said, you know, someone alleges this, how do you respond? Someone alleges that, how do you respond? So there's not one aspect of that report that he wasn't asked about. And he um, and every witness signed a statement that reflects the interview that they had. Representative Lebsack has signed those statements as well. So he has um, full knowledge of all of the allegations, all of the um, uh, details. The part that he hasn't seen is her analysis of um, sort of both sides and, and which she determines to be more credible. So the the, the one report. thing that is not clear, uh, that I don't think was clear to people is in hiring outside investigators, you know, we at the legislature are not um, in the position to be able to conduct these investigations ourselves. We are not trained fact finders and we are, uh, have our other job during the session to do. So hiring an outside investigator means you are asking them to make an assessment of credibility in each of those instances she is asked to help de to determine who do you find more credible do an investigation find out all the facts interview everyone on each side and just tell us who do you think is more credible in this instance? In each of these allegations, she said it is more likely than not that the allegation is true. So I am not an independent fact finder. I take her analysis and from that considered the policy and like I said, considered other actions um, taken um, recently um, in the last few months by Representative Lebsack and came to my recommendation. He absolutely, during the investigative process, has had time to respond to every allegation and then he will have time um, w when the uh, report is finally redacted um, to respond to that. But we wanted to move quickly because 
This process, this investigation has been going on for three months. Obviously, there have been other investigations at the Capitol that have been wrapped up. Um, in the meantime, you know, uh, people are constantly saying, when are you going to take action? And so um, we thought it was important to move quickly. A few of us, Thank noticed, you, a few of us noted, noticed extra security on the House floor today. Was there a reason um, there was extra security brought in? Um, I think it was just smart, and various people have expressed um, concerns about safety. So uh, we thought it was just a good idea. It's obviously an unprecedented um, recommendation, and so um, uh, it just seemed like a good idea. Can you clarify? Thanks. This letter says 11 allegations by five women, but there are only three complaints. So um, there were three complaints that were made public by the complainants. There are two other women that came forward with complaints. With private, com private complaints. Well, they were not released to the press. Sure. And so the more credible than not thing you mentioned just a moment ago applies to all five of these formal complaints. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.